Hello and welcome to this match preview for Southampton's match away against Plymouth Argyle. Now we're going to kick off by just talking about the Norwich game a little bit. Obviously we missed the first half due to Saints play issues but um, obviously we missed five goals. But in reality uh, it was a good performance. I think there's a lot of positives to take. Obviously it's still a very new uh, style of play. Um, so it's not obviously going to be two free games in where it's perfected. And I think we're definitely seeing some progress, especially with uh, attacking style of play. Um, I think we're very, very good going forward. Um, and obviously, you know, a few personnel changes, uh, maybe some strengthening in some areas could really help us with that. Um, but overall, we've been very good. Um, very good. Very impressive considering, you know, again, like Nathan Jones, for example, had five weeks during the World Cup didn't change anything about the club, the philosophy, the style of play, nothing. Um, and then obviously Russ Martin's had six weeks, completely different team, completely different style of playing. It's like a completely different team in general. Um, so I think that's it's positive that that big of a change has happened, especially considering a lot of players, I mean, let's be honest, we didn't rate half of them, um, especially over the last season and the season before and season four. And they've definitely turned a new leaf, definitely some of them, um, sort of shown what they can do. And obviously you can say, oh, it's a championship, oh, it's weaker teams, blah, blah, blah. But I think within six weeks, going from a team that can barely function, can barely string together five to ten passes, to then becoming a team that loves position, 70 plus percent position, and not just having position for the sake of position. I mean, we had 30 shots against Norwich. I mean, we're clearly getting there some, some regard into creating chances. Obviously... It all depends on what what sort of team we're playing. Obviously, Sheffield Wednesday was harder to break down because they were sitting deeper. Norwich, not so much because they were willing to attack. And they, well, they they proved it because they put four past us. Um, obviously, I've, I've, you know, I've praised the attack, but obviously we can easily criticise the defence. Obviously not Bazunu because Bazunu, I mean, none of the goals that we've conceded in the championship, obviously that's when Bazunu's played, have been his fault. Um, quite clearly, it's the defence in front. Uh, that have been causing the issues, and I think it obviously is a bit of a style play issue, obviously playing that sort of high position, um, it's kind of risky at times, definitely, and, you know, it could just be, you know, going to refine it, um, obviously it's different from playing previous seasons, you know, under Salas and Nathan Jones, it's a completely different style of play, uh, so it may take a little bit, you know, to get those sort of um, slight errors out, but then also on the other hand of it, individual errors that aren't caused by the style of play. Uh, we definitely saw, saw a few of them um, in the last game against Norwich, especially the Manning one, for example. Uh, and then obviously our set-piece issue. Uh, we all know how bad we are from set-pieces, and that's a massive issue. Obviously, we've got that new set-piece coach from Arsenal, I do believe. Um, and he's supposedly great, but obviously how long does that take, in, take to kick in um, to get us better from set-pieces, both attacking and defensively? I will start against Norwich. The crosses from corners, crosses from free kicks were good. I've always said that, you know, a lot of people blamed War Prowse for, you know, oh, his delivery is so good, but it never goes in, so clearly his delivery is not that great. It's like, well, you know, putting the ball in an area is one thing, but having someone to actually be able to get there and header it in is a different story, right? So I feel as if the delivery was good, but obviously the lack of sort of aerial threat, and this is both uh, offensively and defensively. I think, you know, the likes of Salazu was very good at that um, in the air, but... Obviously, we shipped them off, right? He, he refused to play for six months, basically. Um, and I think Bednarak and Stevens, they're not bad. They're not bad for the championship. They're not bad for the championship. Prem, they're awful. But championship, they're not bad. But I do feel like there's a lack of aerial threat, both offensively and defensively. So hopefully, I'm begging, we sign a centre-half in some regard in this uh, transfer window because obviously, we don't want Lianco playing. Please, God, no. Obviously, Kautikar, Salazu, Bella Kotchep still injured. Um, I mean, like, Salazu and Kautikar are gone. Um, so we're pretty limited with our centre-back choices. So I feel like we desperately need a centre-back, or even two, depending on if Lianco leaves or Bella Kotchep leaves in this window. I think Bella Kotchep will be amazing when he's fit, if he wants to play for us, of course. Obviously, that's a big question mark, and that's been the case with a lot of people. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's a lot to improve on. There's a lot to be proud of as well. Um, definitely a positive start to the season. Obviously, I would say Norwich is a good side. So a four-all draw, yes. Shit defense sometimes. Good attack sometimes. We got a bit lucky with a penalty decision. We rode our luck a bit, but that's sort of how it is um, in football. A lot of times you'll get result, uh, not results, but um, decisions from referees that go your way and, and obviously uh, against you as well. Obviously, we saw that a lot in the Prem. 
Um, but at least there's no VAR this time where you can't, you're can't. you not going to get the replay and go, well, it's a clear pin or that's a clear foul or that's a bloody, you know, red card. And then the refs go, nah. And you're just sitting there like, you're paid for this, by the way. Um, so, yeah. I'm pretty happy with how it goes at the moment. Uh, obviously, I just need some some personnel uh, signings um, definitely in this window, and I'm I'm pretty sure we're going to get some. You know, Downs is coming in, so I'm pretty happy with the overall sort of situation at the moment. Now, looking at Plymouth, obviously, I'll say it again, not exactly uh, brilliantly, you know, involved in the championship basically ever. So a lot of these style of plays, you know, a lot of the players I don't really know. But I will say, Plymouth Argyle play what looks to be a 4-3-3. Obviously, I'm on Google, so who knows, right? Who knows if this is legitimate? But they play a 4-3-3, which is exactly similar to us. Whether they play a different type of 4-3-3, it doesn't really show it on Google. I probably should find a website that's better, uh, but that's on me. I'm fucking lazy. But the only play, there's only one player I know from Plymouth Argyle, and it is Ben Wayne, the Wayne Trine, from New Zealand. He played for the Wellington Phoenix for a few seasons, and I watched them. Um, that's the only player I know. Um, I honestly, now while I'm recording this, probably should have at least watched the highlights of the Plymouth game. I probably should have done that. Next time, I will remember to watch the highlights of the games of who were playing, so I actually have a fucking understanding of how they actually play. But in terms of this, Plymouth Argyle newly promoted. Um, obviously, same with Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, they've had a much better start than Sheffield Wednesday. Obviously, Sheffield Wednesday losing the first two. Plymouth Argyle winning their first against Huddersfield. And then, obviously, drawing away to Watford, which actually isn't a bad result. Watford thrashed, I think it was, was it QPR on the first day, 4-0. Um, so, it's not a bad result. Watford, you would... It, it's hard to say, but you would guess they would be fighting for playoffs, right? They'd be a you know top half, top 10 team, right? You would expect. So, for them to go away, get a draw, clean sheets. I mean, looking at the stats, they didn't have much position, but... In reality, you're not going to have much position against a team that has better individuals, really, uh, most of the time. So, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of excited. I've, uh, you know, there's a lot of teams that we've played already. Um, you know, like Sheffield. Oh, well, I can't. Oh, I guess Sheffield wins. Yeah, and like like Gillingham and stuff. Gillingham, I should say. Um, we haven't really, well, me, for me personally, haven't really watched. Um, so it's good to see. Like, I don't know. I guess that's a positive of the championship. You're going down to another division and you're watching us play against teams we don't really know much about. So it's an interesting change. Um, but away to Plymouth, uh, we'll just jump straight into to my lineup. Uh, obviously, War Prowse is now gone. lavia has gone, but he wasn't going to be in the team anyway. Uh, Smallbone's gone with an injury. Uh, I, I don't know the exact amount of time he's out, but I saw that it was, you know, initial thoughts was a few weeks, but now it's, you know, a few months. Um, so that's a big loss, considering we're already sort of lacking midfield um, players. So it's going to be difficult, but obviously we're just going to go for it easy. Bazunu and goal, nothing really need to be said. Um, criticism that he doesn't deserve. He's a good ball playing keeper, you know, whatever. Walk Peters obviously going to play at right back. Um, I mean, it's inverted fullbacks like his dream, basically. He's excellent on the ball, so... It works perfectly for him, and obviously our centre backs with the same. Obviously, Yanni B, he's uh, well overdue an on goal. I'm just saying that it may be to well not today, but you know when the game happens. Um, other centre back will be Stevens, the new captain, of course. Um, left back Manning. I mean, it's basically going to be the same team. Uh, I would prefer. So this is the this is the difficult part because I don't know. I have a feeling that if Flynn Downs does sign before Plymouth and he's registered before Plymouth and he's fit, obviously to play. I do think he'll chuck him straight in. Um, he's a player like similar to Manning, where he's worked under Russell Martin for a while. So I bet you he's confident that he can just jump into the system and know how to play. Um, so I, I, it's hard. I want to say Flynn Downs will play because I'm guarant like I'm sort of guaranteeing that he's going to sign in time and, and Russell Martin will chuck him in. But I'm going to not say that because I want to be different. I'm going to say it's going to be uh, Shea Charles to start. I think we really need a proper defensive midfielder. And obviously that's what Flynn Downs is going to be. Shea Charles is going to be as well. Um, obviously Shea Charles is a younger player, so it's a it's a little bit difficult to chuck him in the deep end. Obviously we did it with Lavia, to be fair, and that worked out. So who knows, maybe it will work out. But he was good against Norwich. Um, obviously it's a difficult game to come into sort of uh, halfway through it. Obviously I didn't see the first half, so maybe when Shea Charles did come on, it changed the game. I'm not sure. Um, we could have been an absolute mess in that first half against Norwich, and then he came on and it was a bit more... Um, balanced in, in the midfield 
I don't know for certain because obviously I couldn't watch it. So I would start Shay Charles with a midfield of Stuart Armstrong, obviously, um, because we don't really have many options. And then Alcaraz obviously is going to play. I think the only change in that three would be Flynn Downs, whether that's to come in for um, Shay Charles, whether that's to come in for Stuart Armstrong, uh, I don't know. Um, but I can probably guarantee that Flynn Downs will probably play in some regard. Um, but I'm just going to go with that three in midfield. And then going up front, I mean, again, it's just going to be the same. Teller has to play. Adozi has to play. I mean, really, the only winger that's going to challenge them is Suleimana. And I read, I don't know, on Twitter, it is Twitter, so who knows, um, that, you know, uh, was it Monaco offered or someone offered uh, quite a lot of money for Suleimana. I think it was 25 million euros, which is probably close to our sort of valuation of him. So maybe a deal could be done. Um, but Suleimana is really the only winger that you would expect to start. Obviously, uh, the young boy, Amo Amayu. Amo Amayu, I think is how you say it. Um, I wouldn't expect him to start. He's very much, obviously, a very talented player, very high potential. Um, he's brilliant already at 16, or is he 17 now? I think he's still 16, or maybe 17. Um, I don't think you'd start him. I think, as good as he is, you need to sort of slowly bleed him in, right? Slowly bleed him in. I think, you know, coming off of coming on with 20 minutes left, 25 minutes, 30 minutes left is sort of key for him to develop as a player. You want to slowly put him in. You don't just want to chuck him in the deep end and really make him, I don't know, struggle, I guess, if, if the team's not going well with, you know, the first half, it's not structured well or whatever the case could be. Um, it adds a unwanted pressure on such a young player, right? So it's easier to get him off the bench and then if something happens good, if, you know, he doesn't have a massive impact, it's not as, you know, it's not as bad, I guess. Um, so I wouldn't expect him to play, obviously, on the bench, of course, coming off on the bench if we need some attacking quality. Um, but obviously, a dozy teller would be the wingers. And then a striker, for me, it has to be Che Adams, but I know he's not going to start. He's obviously going to start Adam Armstrong. Um, Adam Armstrong, I mean, he hasn't overly impressed me in terms of what he's done so far. Yes, he's got three goals. Dodgy deflected header, two penalties. Um... But his overall play, obviously I didn't see the first half notch, maybe he played great, I don't know. Um, but overall play, he sort of, he sort of hasn't impressed me. Um, but obviously, you know, that could change um, this week or next week or the week after. Um, but for me, it's always Che Adams. Che Adams is a much better striker than Adam Armstrong, in my opinion. Um, and I'd love Che Adams to play and start. Obviously, again transfer noise around him, whether that plays a part in him not starting. Um, I mean, that's uh, that's to see, uh, that's to be seen, if I could speak. Because um, obviously I know there's been bids coming in um, for Ch Chatham, so who knows about that. But that would be my 11, basically. Um, I mean, that's probably the best 11 we can put out, which is a little bit worrying because definitely, we definitely need reinforcements, but again, we can't sign until people fuck off. Um, which is frustrating, but yeah, we're going to go predictions now. Predictions, uh, there's going to be goals. I think we can guarantee that. Obviously, we've scored six goals in our first two, conceded five. So there's definitely going to be goals involved. You know, the style of play is kind of risky, especially with the players we have. Uh, there will be mistakes, defensive errors, positioning errors, stuff like that. So we do get caught on the counter-attack quite often. I don't know how good Plymouth are on the counter-attack, how much pace they have, I'm not sure. I knew Norwich were going to be good on the break because they did have some good players. Um, but I don't know about Plymouth, and I should have watched the highlights, and I'm really regretting recording this without watching it. But it is what it is. has to be done. Um, so I'm going to go for 3-2. That is fucking stupid to predict, isn't it? It's really stupid. But I feel as if there's just going to be goals. Especially away from home, I think Plymouth are going to be more aggressive. If they're away from home, I think they'd sit more. But I feel like Plymouth are going to be full of confidence. You know, four points from their first two games, a uh, good draw away to Watford. They're going to think they can beat anyone, which is not surprising from a newly promoted team. You've got to have that confidence, otherwise you're going to collapse. So I feel like a 3-2 thriller, another thriller. It could be an interesting season for us, really. We could be seeing a lot of goals, both in our net and in the opposition net, but... I don't really know why I've gone free to. I think I feel bad that I didn't. I predicted one all and then it was eight goals, even though I said, yeah, it might be high scoring. But I do feel like we will score goals and I do feel like we will give away goals, right? And I'm not talking like um, I'm expecting Plymouth to rinse us or, or 
destroy us. I feel like it's going to be our positioning errors or give uh, turn turnovers in, in, in our defensive third, um, individual mistakes, giving them the, the ball like Manning did um, for the fourth goal for Norwich. I think it's going to be those sort of mistakes that will give them goals and they'll take them. Um, every team against us so far has been incredibly clinical. Um, obviously, there's, there's moments where they should have scored or whatever and something happened or maybe a good save, but you know, most of the time, I mean, Sheffield Wednesday had three shots on target, scored. Uh, Gillingham had about five, six shots on target and scored three. Um, Norwich had about six or seven shots on target and scored four. You know, that, that's quite ridiculous, really. That is quite ridiculous. So I feel like there's going to be goals. We're going to concede goals. Um, we are a bit frail defensively, but yeah, I'm going to go 3-2 because fucking I'm an idiot. I mean, that's about all I've got for you. Um... And that's really about it. Uh, that's about it for the preview. Um, there's not really much. It's sort of waiting on when it comes to lineups, waiting on those new signings to sort of create competition for some players. Um, obviously, bring a centre back in, a midfielder, and maybe an attacker, like a winger or something, to create that competition, to create the sort of dynamics of the front line or the midfield three. But without those sort of signings, we are sort of this is the eleven we kind of have to play. We don't have a choice which is not exactly good because um, then we can become predictable with our sort of setups. But that's going to be the video. Um, I will promise next time to fucking actually try, okay? I'll watch some bloody highlights next time, um, at least analyze some shit because um, I am pretty fucking lazy. I'll admit it. I'm waffling the whole time. So, yeah, I'll see you boys for watch along. I may... Do not take this as fact. I may start the stream because it is at a good time for me. It is at 11.30 at night for me. So I may start the stream an hour before the game or 45 minutes before the game to get a nice, like, you know, proper preview before the match, talk about it a lot, you know, discuss, you know, our thoughts on lineups and stuff. Instead of being five, ten minutes before kickoff, you know, you're already thinking about the game, not so much the, the build-up to it. So no promises, but I may decide to stream like an hour earlier before the game or, or 45 minutes earlier before the game so we can discuss things but you'll know it'll be scheduled if I do decide to do that but that's going to be the video uh, I hope you all enjoyed there'll be a community post again for your predictions so just fucking you know choose whoever you think will win or draw um, I hope you all enjoyed like subscribe if you did and I'll see you guys for the watch along um, and hopefully we stay unbeaten